younger, someone told me, if you do this up in a bow, you're not cool. And I was like, I'm gonna wear it in a bow because I'm not cool, I'm not cool in the slightest. Like, in the slightest. When she said that, I was like, yeah, I'm not cool, so I'm still gonna wear it in a bow because I think it's cute and pretty and that's what I wanna be, cute! <laughs> the bow looks cute though, right? Hello honeys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Imogen and if you are just joining me then thank you so much for just joining me now and where have you been? No, I'm joking, but if you are new here then please subscribe, I'd be so grateful. Hit that like button, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, don't smash it, don't break it. You know what I mean? P.S. Do you like the bow? Hope you do. My name's Imogen, let's get on with the video. Today we have, I'm so excited, we have part two of failed friendships. Huns, I'm sorry, I think I need to keep these going a bit quicker, don't I? I feel like I was going to do them every two weeks. So this is failed friendships part two, and then failed friendships part three will be in two weeks, because then I have loads of different videos in between it. So yay, this is really exciting. If you like story times, if you want to hear about a failed friendship, then just keep watching. If you've missed part one, I'll link that down below. Go and watch part one and then come back for part two because I'm going to use the names I've been using in part one and then you'll know the backstory. So today, obviously you would know from the title, today is Failed Friendships part two and this is about a thief. This is about my friend being a thief. Stealing a stealer. Not stealing the makeup. No, 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 she's a stealer. She's a stealer. She steals things. Oh yes, she does. I have three different occasions of this and I'm going to tell you about them. Basically, just quickly before we start as well, I just wanted to let you know the reason I do story times about failed friendships or about anything I've been through in the past is because I want to spread awareness to my Huns. I feel like I would be doing you a disservice and I wouldn't be being the best friend that I want to be to all of you if I wasn't going to tell you everything that I've been through. And that is something I preach on my channel about being open and being honest and sharing everything I can with you. So I want to share things that I've been through because I feel like it's raised awareness to all of you. There are so many of us that have gone through so many similar situations and we've lost friendships and, and losing friendships is a really big thing. People go through this all the time, whatever age you are, whether you're really young, whether you're 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, up to 25, my age, or even older. My mum's had issues in her 40s. You know, she's had issues with friendships in her 40s, so it doesn't matter what age you are. The reason I do these videos is because you are not alone. I want to show you that all of you, whatever you go through, we've all been through it. Sometimes the situations we think that we're the only person that's going through it, but trust me, I promise you, everyone's been through it. And reading through my comments that you write to me, so many of you have been through failed friendships and failed previous relationships. And I feel like we focus so much on relationships breaking our heart, but failed friendships can 110% break your heart. You can feel broken because you give so much to a friend and you give even more sometimes to a friend than you would a boyfriend because they become your whole world. And when you lose that friend, it's so hard. It's so difficult. Without further ado, let's get on with failed friendships part two. Without the hair on my face. Subscribe. Please. So if you've already watched the backstory, then you will know my failed friendship friend was called Laura. Laura was the best friend of my life. She was the best to this date. I have best friends, but I genuinely believed at the time this girl was going to be my best friend for life. I have loads of failed friendships coming up. I have part three, part four, part five. You just wait. And they get progressively worse. I feel like I'd start a little bit soft. The end one is the worst thing anyone could ever do to anyone, so stay tuned for the end one. That's another story time, that's another time. So I thought I'd start with this one. So basically, there are three different scenarios. There's more than that, but there's three different scenarios where the girl stole. So we'll start with this one. I was a very innocent child. I was such an innocent child, actually, very naive. My parents kind of bubble wrapped me. They had really difficult upbringings, and I feel like my parents, in a way, wanted to protect me from everything in the world. So I was in this little cocoon and bubble, and then I met Laura. She introduced me to a world of things I didn't realise or didn't even know about. So we were out shopping one day and my parents were very protective and they didn't really like me going into town but she was my best friend and I'd got a phone by this point, I was 14 by this point and I was in town loving life and we were in boots. Now I couldn't afford Benefit makeup. I still don't really go and buy Benefit makeup because it is quite expensive. I do love Benefit but my gal, I'm saving money. I will hit the drugstore up sometime soon, do you know what I mean? She was looking at this Benefit dandelion blusher. I still remember it to this day. And I had my little Sony Ericsson, you know the flip phone? You know the one that Nelly Furtado has in her video, um, throw on or off? No, nope, didn't think so. Dun, dun, dun. How you doing, little lady? What's that? Promiscuous girl, hey, however you are, I'm all alone and it's you that I want. Promiscuous boy, you already... That one. Yeah, I can sing, but I'm just taking the mic. Anyway, so that one. So I had that little flip phone and I was loving life. Anyway, we were sharing a bag that day and I put my Sony Ericsson phone in her bag. Is it a Sony Ericsson or a Siemens? 
doesn't really matter, does it, Imogen? It's a little bit irrelevant. Anyway, we don't need that detail. So then I put my phone in her bag. Now, as I've put my phone in her bag, she's chilling around in it, taking my hand out, love life. So she's looking at this blusher and I'm just unaware and oblivious to what is actually going on. Now, in my head, I've never stolen in my life, actually, lie, I will tell you that, that's a lie, oh my God, don't judge me. I did steal something in my life. I actually ate some pick and mix from the pick and mix boxes mm -hmm. in Tesco Candy King, don't worry about that, but I was very young. I was very young. Please don't judge me. And I won't judge you. Stop, stop. Does anyone else do that? You find a song for every single thing you say. Basically, I'd never sold anything except a Candy King swing. I'm really sorry, in Tesco, please don't come for me. <laughs> anyway, we'd walked out and I'd actually bought cotton wool pads. I remember it, I bought cotton wool pads. I think they were like 89p or 99p. Anyway, they weren't my favorite ones that I get now, but that's irrelevant as well. We got out of Boots in Brighton and we turned right. We hadn't even got away from the shop and she went, Look what Laura got and got out this Benefit blusher. I think that Benefit blusher was like 21 or 23 pounds. Bearing in mind, Laura came from money. Like it wasn't as if she couldn't afford that. Like I, my parents would never have bought me a Benefit blusher unless it was a birthday present or something ridiculously special because my parents didn't believe in spending that money on a blusher. They would rather have taken me swimming and had a family day out but she'd stolen it. Anyway, my heart sank, my heart sank. And before I even say anything, she was so buzzing. I was like, oh my God, what have you done? This guy who still works there, the security guard still works there to this day, came out and went, ladies, can you step inside please? Or girls, did he say girls? I think he said girls, because we were young. He went, girls, can you step inside please? Anyway, never been so mortified in my life, this security guard. Small little short guy, ginger hair. Still see him there now, I think, oh my God, please. Every time I see him, I'm like, oh my God, please, please. She hear my stomach rumble then? That's nerves, huh? That's nerves from talking about the story. It does get better, I promise. If it's boring, I'm really sorry. So then he's escorting us through Boots and I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Even though I haven't even done it. All that's going through my head is, oh my God, my parents are gonna think I've stolen. And my parents didn't bring me up to do that. My parents did not. Honestly, my parents would have flipped a lid if they thought I'd done that. But they know I wouldn't have done that. They know their heads, but imagine they got a call from the police. They would have been like, what is going on? Trying to make this story as short as I can, I'm crying. We're walking through boots, people are staring at us. I'm crying my eyes out. She's not crying. She doesn't really care. Doesn't really care. No remorse, no crying, no nothing. Wait for this. Oh, and by the way, after this story, I still remain friends with her. Yeah, cute. So then we're in the back and there's this guy and this other guy. So the guy that pulled us back and there was also another guy sitting by a computer. And it was a really scary room. I don't get into trouble. The only thing I ever got into trouble about at school was talking too much, as you can probably imagine. I used to get sent out of class for just talking too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, they'd be like, Imogen out. So then, this is the worst thing. I know this sounds really overdramatic, but I promise you, in my head, I thought my parents would disown me if they thought I'd stolen. <laughs> they wouldn't, but there's me like, I've lost my family, I've lost my friends, I'm going to prison. I thought I was going to prison. I thought I was going to prison. When we get into that back room, I don't care, I'm fighting for my life here. I was like, Laura, tell them I've done nothing wrong. Because I'm not taking the rap for doing something my friend did. I had no clue what she was doing. I never knew, I had no inclination. Anyway, they show the video. And in the video, as I put my phone in the bag, that's when she put the dandelion benefit blush inside. So it looks as though we've been conspiring and we've had this, you know, I'm gonna put my hand in, you put your hand in. I had no clue, I was singing. You see me singing on camera. You see me like jamming to myself. So they must think I'm going, boy, we got a little blusher. Do you know what I mean? So I said to her, please, please, please tell them I've done nothing wrong. Oh, she doesn't. She's standing there and she's like, no, nothing, game face. That girl could play poker, could lie for life. She didn't even say sorry. She just sat there and didn't say anything. Nothing, no words, absolutely nothing. I was like, Laura, tell them I've done nothing wrong, please. And I was crying my eyes out. Yes, I am a scaredy cat. <laughs> I was crying my eyes out. This guy was so scared, but the other guy, he could see something in me, like not the redhead guy, because he was not nice. He was not nice at all. He's like, stop lying, stop lying. He was going crazy. He's like, why did you do it? And I was like, oh my God, I haven't done anything wrong. I was like, please tell him I haven't done anything wrong. Please, please, please. I was like, don't know why she did it, but she obviously did it for a reason that, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, maybe she's not happy at home. I was trying to get her out of it. I was trying to get her out of it. I was like, please just like pity her. Maybe she's not happy at home. Like maybe her mum wouldn't buy it for her. I'm sorry, she's sorry. Aren't you sorry, aren't you sorry? Then I turned to this guy because I could see he was a little bit softer. And I said, I know you get so many girls back here and boys that probably say to you, they haven't done anything wrong. And they have. 
I can legitimately swear on my whole family's life, I got brought up, I went to church every single Sunday, I would never steal in my life. And then I was like, I stole a sweet once when I was younger, but that was it. He must have thought, oh my God, this girl. He must have thought I'd just get her out of the room because she doesn't stop crying. I tried to get my friend out of it and this guy was like, listen, I actually believe you. And I said to him, I know you get people here in front of you that say this and they're lying, but I'm not lying to you. I am telling you the truth. My friend, hang me out to dry. My friend, my best friend, hung me out to dry. She went, she made me do it. She wanted me to do it. I was like, sorry what? Sorry what? She wanted me to take the rap. She told them I'd made her do it. Made? I don't even know you were doing it, babe. Like, I was upset at this point. At this point, I'm a little bit hysterical. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'll never do that. Why are you saying that? And then I turned to the guy and I was like, please, listen to me. I was like, you've got two girls in front of you. They must have thought, we aren't in a counselling session, babe. So if you've got problems in your friendships, we didn't need to know about it. She legitimately, all she said was, she made me do it. She was the reason I did it. She made me do it. She wanted me to do it. Can you understand at that point, I was like, I still remained friends with her because I'm absolutely brilliant there with friendships. But I was like, are you actually mad? Are you actually mad? I was like, are you, are you actually mad? I actually still don't have words for this point. Anyway, I'm very, very, very lucky that that guy actually believed me. He didn't believe her. He did not believe her because she picked it up. And I look like the more fearful of the friend, so I think he definitely believed me. Well, he definitely believed me because he let me go. He said, listen, I'm gonna let you go, but I need to speak to your friend. So then I said, I'm not letting my friend sit in here without me. And they were like, you don't have a right to say that. But I still want to sit in there with her, even though she try and hang me out to dry. There's me still trying to be a mate. Like, I'll look after you. <laughs> so then I'm standing outside and they said to her, we need your address. And she said, I'm not living at home at the moment. And she was like, I can give you my sister's address. So I thought she'd give her older sister's address. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They, she didn't have ID. She's 14. They didn't ask anything from her, really. The redheaded guy wanted to do more, but the other guy was a lot softer. And he let her go. Anyway, she had to give her name and address and all these things. So she gives her name, but she gives my address. Because a week later, four days later, obviously I didn't have a dress coming except from my savings account, my nationwide savings account, Love and Life of the Building Society. My dad's opened my post because my parents, they opened my post, like, you know, whatever. And I think it had something on the top that made them open it. So I didn't ever get post. And they read it and my dad was fuming because he thought it was addressed to her but it was for me because it's come to my address. So my dad, I'm not gonna lie to you, my dad, I would get a telling off. Like my parents love me so much, but they disciplined me. Obviously they didn't hit me, but they disciplined me and I should have been disciplined. Not for that because I didn't steal, but when I was younger, I think I'm the reason I am today because my parents grounded me and they made me moral and they kept me on my feet and they disciplined me. I think every kid needs to be disciplined, but my dad went crazy and you know wasn't hearing me out and I was like dad I would never do that in my life and I was like I swear on Hugo's life I would never do that in my life and because Hugo was young at the time he was a baby at the time my dad automatically believed me I, I said it was Laura she did it and she'd obviously given my address I never really pulled Laura up on it though did I no no didn't she came around and I said you gave my address and she was like yeah was it gonna give mine was I and there's me like yeah that's fine keep walking all over me I was actually the biggest walkover and I, I know people look at me and they think, oh, I would never look at you like you're a pushover because I do have a backbone now. I do. I would not take anything from anyone now. Well, saying that I don't know. Saying that I don't know because everyone can say I wouldn't take that now and I wouldn't do that now, but you don't know until you're facing that situation, you know. And yes, I do have a backbone, but unfortunately things do still hurt me. I'm very emotional, I'm very sensitive and things do still affect me. But I wouldn't take that now, I hope I wouldn't anyway. Like if I've got to complain about something, I will complain about it. But I think it's different with friends, it's different with family and it's different with boyfriends. It's different with someone you love because you feel like you're emotionally attached to them and you hold on to that. I used to think if I lost her as a friend, I would have no one. And I held on to her for that and I let her walk all over me. But she just had no remorse for anything. And I was like, you got me in trouble with my dad. And she was like, well, I would have gotten in loads more trouble with my mom. And I was like, but I didn't do anything, you did. But she just didn't care. She just didn't care. I know that doesn't sound very bad, that's not a bad story in the slightest, but that was just another thing where that girl just screwed me over. Next story about thieving. 
let's go on to this one. So when she was living with me, she didn't have all of her stuff. My dad would buy her makeup, my dad would look after her, whatever she needed. Well, obviously she wasn't needing makeup because she's stealing it left, right and centre, God knows. But I would share everything with her. Share is caring in my books. I was always such a giving friend. Like I'd be like, I've got these new shoes, I haven't worn them yet, but you wear them. I'm still like that now. You know, I buy things online and I'll give them to my mum, I'll give them to my best friends before I've even worn them because I love seeing people happy. I love making people happy. I'm like, oh my God, you have to wear this for your night out. I always dress my mum for her night out. I love it, I love it. Anyway, I was always like sharing everything I had with her. She wouldn't share anything with me though, ever. Ever. Let's say I wanted a little bit of hula bronzer for a little bit of a contour, which I didn't even know what I was contouring late back then because I didn't even know what contouring was. Let's just ignore that. Let's use the bronzer for bronzer all over my face. Yeah, it was just an orange mess back there, hum buns. Match that. Oh no, I was worse than that. I was worse than that background. I'd be like, can I use a bit of your bronzer? She'd be like, no. And there's me like, okay, do you want the blusher then? Are you all right, Imogen? You okay? Like, I look back now and think, I don't know. I think it was because I was bullied. And I think because she'd come along and I had no one, I held on to her. And I think a lot of us do that. I think, unfortunately, we're so worried about being alone and we're so worried about not having friends around us that we hold on to people that maybe aren't good for us. This girl was the opposite of good for me. She was the worst friend I've ever had. But there's me just chilling, holding on to whatever we had left because I didn't want to be on my own. I felt like if I didn't have her, being on my own was such a scary thing, but now I'm like, listen, if my best friends were treating me like this, I would be so hurt and heartbroken to have to walk away from them because I love my best friends, but I would walk away from it because I'd be like, I can't, you, I can't part with that. I can't, life's too short to part with that. So then anyway, she'd go her separate ways sometimes for her nights out because she was a little bit more wild than me. She had other friends in friendship groups and she used to do certain drugs and go out drinking and that was just not me so when she would go out when she would go out she would wear my stuff because I'd I, like I'd give it to her and I would never ever get that stuff back like let's say I gave her a hoodie and a denim jacket that hoodie and denim jacket would get left at some random boy's house some la random girl's house and then she'd come back wearing their clothes and I'd be like babe where's my denim jacket and my jumper and bearing in mind back then, my stuff was bought from pocket money that I'd worked for from my parents. You know, I didn't have a job, I was 14, 15, whatever. So all the money I actually had was only ever from my parents. So they bought me those clothes and my mum was not happy about it. She was like, where's all your clothes going? Stop lending your clothes out. And I was always lending the clothes out. But she'd lend my clothes out. She'd lend my clothes out. I'd see other girls on Facebook and Bebo in my clothes. And I'd be like, oh babe, did you just give that to her? Oh, I wouldn't be like that. I'd be like, oh, did you lend that to her then? Idiot Imogen. Like sometimes I think I'd get a bit upset with her. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't a complete pushover. I would tell her how I feel, but because I was so soft and such a walkover, she knew that she could just belittle me and manipulate me and make me feel like I'm being stupid or I'm being pathetic. She'd be like, oh, shut up, it's a denim jacket, like, get over it. she be like, I'll get it back. She'd like, you keep asking about it, I'll get it back. And I'd be like, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, she'd turn into an argument. So automatically, I would back off and be like, oh, right, stop talking, Imogen. But this is the worst one. This is the worst stealing story. Oh, yeah. Basically, my dad, growing up, my parents have always had students. So they'd rent out rooms to foreign students who would stay in our house. And it was amazing growing up because we had so many different people around and from so many different places in the world. And it was incredible because we had like an extended family. And still to this day, we still keep in contact with a lot of the students that live with us. But that's all I ever knew growing up because it would really help my parents out. Like my parents had two jobs, but then also they had people living there that would come over to learn English. You know, it was through um, certain colleges and stuff like that. Anyway, so we had this one Russian student and she was amazing she was like a sister to me she stayed with us for a year and a half and you know that one person you've just become really close with we were similar ages she was two years above me but she looked so much younger than me she was so so beautiful and so cute and we just got on really well like sometimes we'd have sleepovers in our rooms and i just loved her so much her parents were helping funding her over here because obviously she didn't have a job and she was learning english she was a very intelligent, amazing girl. Her parents would fund her and she was very lucky and very fortunate to come from a very privileged background where her parents would send her quite a bit of money. They would also keep tabs on what she was doing with that money, but they would send her money. 
Sometimes in her drawers, there would be a lot of 50 pound notes. I would only know that because she'd go into her drawer to get something out and I'd just see these 50 pound notes and I'd be like, oh my gosh. God, that gal, like, she's loving life. And back then, one 50 pound note for me, I could have seen through for like two months. Oh, I would have made that 50 pound work. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're younger, you're like, I can make this work. I would go to Primark, I would make the most of that 50 pounds. Now I feel like 50 pounds goes on a Starbucks and a panini. Do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously that's an over exaggeration, but yeah. So the girls come running downstairs and she's explained to my dad that 500 pounds has gone missing cash from her drawer. Now, obviously, having 500 pound cash, you'd know it's gone missing. You would know 500 pounds has gone missing. So then my dad's automatically thinking it was one of the other students because he would never assume it was me because I would never do that in my life. He would never assume it was Laura because she's living in our home, she's my best friend. He would never have ever assumed that. He would never have ever assumed that. So this girl's crying and she's saying that her mum and dad are telling her that she needs to be deported back to Russia. She's going back to Russia, they're stopping her, you know, they're stopping her education, she's got to go back because they think she spent that money. They think she's lying. They either said to her, if you're lying and you've spent that money, it's disgusting you spend that in a week, we only just gave it to you. Or they said, if you're living with someone who's stolen from you, we don't want you living in that house anymore and you're coming back. So she's crying her eyes out. And this girl, I was so, like, I was attached to her. She was like part of my family. Like, she lived with us. You know, my parents became her parents kind of thing because they were her parents away from home. So I would never have assumed that was my best friend ever in my life. Ever in my life would she come into my house where my parents are looking after her and steal from someone living in our house. Never in my life would I think that anyone could be that disgusting to do that. That's like Jeremy Kyle stuff. That's like something you put on Jeremy Kyle, like lie detector, did you steal from a student that's living in your best friend's house? Do you know what I mean? So then, oh God. The next weekend, she was like, I'm not staying yours this weekend. And I was like, oh, okay. And she was going on a trip to see her dad and her dad worked away. So I was like, cause her dad wasn't at her house. Her dad was, didn't live at home with her. And I was like, okay, very random. So I was like, is your dad paying your flight? She was like, yeah, 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 dad's paying flight. So she come back on the Sunday to, from this trip with her dad and she had so much stuff. All Saints belts, All Saints belts back then were, ex All Saints belts are expensive. All Saints is so expensive. Isn't it expensive? Like, is it designer? Because it's expensive. It's like they've thrown something in like a shredder, like a top, and it's become a little bit like deceased, you know, like it's sort of frayed at the edges or whatever. And it's like 105 pounds and you're like, All Saints, All Saints. This isn't Saints because this is a sinner. Like that's a sin to spend that much money on a top that I could buy from Primark. <laughs> anyway, if you love All Saints, I'm sorry. I love you so much and go and enjoy All Saints. I'm just saying I've not got the money to spend on All Saints. But she came back with so much stuff. Probably about, I would say, 500 pounds worth of shopping. My head didn't really click then because I was naive. I'd never assumed she'd do that. But my head did go a tiny bit and think, well, your mum isn't having you at home. Your dad, and your mum is still together, so your mum, the mum would have communicated to the dad, like, don't spend money on Laura because she stole from the sister in the previous video. That's in my other backstory. And the mum wasn't speaking to her daughter, so I would assume that the dad wouldn't have gone and spent loads of money on her. You'd think. That's what you'd think. So then on the Monday, I'd come home early from school. My school finished at six o'clock. Well, her school day finished at three. So I'd come back early because people that weren't in the sports event got to come home. So I'd come back early. She was on the phone to another friend of ours who, need I say, is quite dodgy. I'm not friends with her anymore, but she was a friend through Laura and she was a, just a really bad influence on Laura. Well, they were both bad influences on each other. Anyway, I heard her say on the phone, yeah, I just took it from the drawer and she was laughing. So then at this point, I still didn't go into the room because I was so nervous to confront her about it because my heart sank. If my dad knew, if my dad knew that she'd done that, what, what was my dad gonna do? Chuck her out? What was I actually meant to do? I was so emotionally blackmailed, emotionally messed up from this girl, she made me feel so rubbish about myself that I didn't want to tell my dad that she'd stolen that much money from our student. Because my dad was thinking it was all the other students. My dad had canceled all the other students' contracts and was getting new students in because of this. So my head's gone. I'm like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. So I went downstairs and I spoke to my dad and I said, what's the student doing? And they said that the student's parents said she's allowed to stay. The girl was really hurt. Like I know 500 pounds to get an allowance isn't a really lucky thing anyway, but that's her money and that's her parents' hard earned money. No one's allowed to go and steal. 
Ceiling is disgusting. Eventually my dad had to actually fund that girl. Hello family, love you. They're all over there, just saying hello. Hello angels. Love you, I'm coming in too. Yeah. So then, sorry. So then basically, long story short, I went in and I was like, I heard what you said on the phone. And she was like, what? I was like, I heard what you said. She was like, heard what? And I was like, I heard you said you took something from the drawer. She was like, yeah. I was like, from the girl's drawer. I'm not saying her name, sorry. I was like, from the girl's drawer. She was like, no, I said I'd take something from your drawer, like, take your bra. And I was like, why would you be talking about taking my bra? I was like, I lend you everything anyway. Like, I lent her my underwear. Like, everything in my drawers was hers anyway. And I was like, I know you're lying. And she just backed, tracked. She backtracked. Listen, you don't tell someone on the phone, like, oh yeah, I've just taken something out of Imogen's drawer. What have I got that you can't already get anyway? You can take everything out of my drawers. I give you everything. But then she started lying, going really red, and I know her lying face. I know her lying face. And I was like, I oh, know you did it. She was like, cool, you got no proof. And I was like, but I know you did it. But the thing is, unfortunately, that girl had some stuff on me. Like, my dad didn't really know at the time that I was going out with someone older. My dad also didn't know that I used to go underage clubbing. Like, I did things that that girl had on me, and I thought if my dad found that out, he would be so mortified. Knowing now, my dad wouldn't have cared. He would have been like, Imogen, what is going on? I know he would have had a go at me, but he wouldn't have been, you know, horrible or anything. If my parents would have found out that I was going out with an older boy, they did eventually find out I was going out with an older boy because he was my boyfriend for a long time. But she threatened me. She was like, if you tell your dad, I'll tell your dad you're doing this, this. And I was like, oh my God, I was stuck. And now looking back at it, I wasn't stuck. I could have gone and just said to my dad, dad, I went clubbing. And he would have been like, we've all done it. We've all been young. We've all done, made mistakes, whatever. But in my head, I was so scared to disappoint my family. She never said she did it, but by saying, if you go and tell your dad, I'll tell your dad you did this, she admitted it. And I remember sitting there thinking, my best friend is the opposite of me. It was really weird. As much as she do to me, I'd still love her so much. Like, I idolised her. I idolised her. Everyone used to say, I used to look at her like, you're just the most amazing thing in the world, even though she wasn't in the slightest. But when you love a friend, it's so strange. It's such a weird feeling. Like, they can do the worst things to you, but you give them so many allowances. Like, if that was just a friend, not my best friend, I would have been like, right, you're out. And I remember being so torn, because I was like, if my dad knew, what am I meant to do? And I was so young, I could never have got 500 pounds together. But what could I actually do? I had no proof. She never, ever, ever admitted it. So if I had gone and told my dad, and I had gone and told that girl, what was I meant to do? And the thing is, it could have been one of the students. How was I meant to get money from her? What was I meant to do? When me and Laura fell out, I did tell my dad, and my dad was like, but Imogen, even if you had told me, what could I have done? Like, what could I have actually done? My dad was in such a difficult position because we had no proof. If he'd gone to the, the Russian girl that was staying here, she took it, but she denied it. What can we do? Force money out of a year old girl? No, we couldn't have done that. It was such an awkward, awful position. My dad offered the girl the money. My dad said, listen, let me give you the money. And the girl was like, no, because you didn't steal it from me. The girl was like, you did not steal that from me. But I just, I will never understand how I stayed friends with that girl for so long. Like you wait until you hear the next stories, like the next story times. It's like, like I even look now and I'm thinking to myself, even like talking about it gives me the sweats. And I just think to myself, what were you doing, Imogen? Like, really, were you that insecure? I was, I was such an insecure, vulnerable, naive. I was so lonely. I hated being alone. I didn't want to be on my own. I was so dependent of that girl to make me happy that the fear of being on my own was more scary than being friends with someone that horrible. I just, I don't get it. You wait until you hear the next story time. So, honeys, I really hope you liked this video. Please give it a massive thumbs up if you did. Make sure you watch the backstory and also make sure you stay tuned for the next two weeks because story time number three, Failed Friendships Part Three, will be coming up. I want to do these videos because I want to tell you, honeys, that please don't feel like it's horrible being alone. Please do not be friends with someone if they are treating you badly because you are scared to be on your own, because you're not on your own, you have me. And being on your own isn't a scary thing. Being on your own out of a relationship, being on your own out of a friendship isn't a scary thing, angels. Being friends with someone like that is scary. Being friends with someone who is bad and who's a bad person is a scary thing because you're being hurt every single minute of the day and you will end up feeling more alone and more insecure being friends with that person than you ever would when you're alone. I just want you to know, angels, if you are going through something like this or if you've had a friend in the past that's hurt you, please just know we've all been through it and you will find a friend that you are meant to have in the future, I promise you. It doesn't matter how long it takes, when you find that friend that is meant to be your best friend, they will be your best friend and they will not hurt you the way someone else used to. I love you all with all my heart, I really hope
hope you liked this video. Please give it a massive thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button because we have loads more story times. I've got so many story times where that comes from. Came from or comes from? Came from. If you are new here, then basically I play a song game, so you just gotta guess the sound and I'm mama too. One. I think that was quite a cute one, no? My shout outs today are to Ashley Still and Alice Ford. I love you both so much. You wrote on Failed Friendships Part 1 and I love you so much for that. Thank you for even watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing to me. Thank you for being a hun. I love you with all my heart. If you want a post notification shout out, all you need to do is turn that post notification bell on, hit the subscribe button and then just comment hashtag I'm a hun and tell me that you're done. That rhymes. Yes. Got a dry throat now, hun. So I need to go and eat and get some, um, little bit of liquidation. Is that right? No. Lubricate the throat. That's an awful word. Give me a bit of liquid. What is it? What is that word when you're you're dehydrated? You need to hydrate. You need to get hydrated. That's it. I love you all so much. Thanks for watching this video. I'm sorry if it was rubbish, but I've got worse ones coming, I promise. I love you with all my heart. And until next time, I'm gonna love you. And I'm gonna leave you. I love you.